What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this Tuesday, September 27th, 2022 date. It is about 5.11 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows some activity. It looks like a uh, 2.8 on the Earthquake 3D globe in Hawaii. They did see a 4.5 earthquake there just a short time ago. Things starting to rock and roll a little bit there on the big island. But first, we're going to jump into the hurricane uh, situation right now with Hurricane Ian. 120 mile per hour sustained winds here at pressure 27.96 uh, inches. Uh, it is currently a strong category three. If we look here at the storm category, 111 to 129 mile per hour sustained winds, category three, 130. To 156 for category four and then of course above that you get into those monster uh storms we are I, i'm not for certain if this thing's going to reach category five but it is expected to reach category four here very soon um it only needs roughly about uh 10 more uh, miles per hour speed added on to its current conditions here this is as of today 1600 um which is uh four o'clock my time here this is the windy app i utilize this uh premium app here for hurricane monitoring and uh, storm convection and rain accumulation here's florida that sits up to the north we are getting some pretty heavy bands already of the um, convection from this hurricane reaching the uh, mainland there of florida let me show you guys the weather radar these are just some, uh, well, there's some thunderstorms up here, it looks like, around the Fort Lauderdale area uh, and northward. This is only going to intense um, ahead, get more uh, intense, I should say, as the system, as this hurricane makes its way towards the, uh, the Cape Coral area and the Northport region. Notice that this model is still in agreement with the uh, landfall hitting a Category 4 right at the Northport area. Um, let's go ahead and check out the winds once again here. Bring up the wind gust. Um, and sometimes we can get some very strong wind gusts in there. Even though it's a currently 120 mile per hour sustained winds, we can get some rather strong, a much stronger wind gust in there as well. All right, so let's take a look at the path here. This is the ECM WF model as of today, uh, just about an hour or so. Actually, it looks like it's updated. Uh, around 5 p.m. We're going to go up here to about midnight my time. So that's going to be 3 a.m. there along the um, along the east coast there or along the uh, Florida region. Notice tomorrow uh, we could be looking at uh, 132 mile per hour sustained winds around 11. Again, this is this is midnight my time. Getting close there up to the Cape Coral area. Just getting some of those uh, brunt of the winds there kicking in. Let's go ahead and check around uh, Wednesday about noon time, or uh, let's go early morning, 8 a.m. my time. Things are really cooking there as far as the high wind speeds. Uh, and this is where it's going to be the strongest. It will weaken as it does go over land and pull in a lot of the drier air. Even though it's still super humid, uh, this land mass here, Florida itself, will kind of deteriorate the hurricane strength uh, right now it does have a pretty awesome eye on it let me bring this up here real quick uh meant to have this on there there uh here's the noaa.gov site the latest imagery let's go over here to the loop because this is pretty cool to be able to see the uh the features here let this spin up here for a second this is uh what do we got 24 loop zoom in a little bit here take a look at that monster a lot of convection here within this eye looks like it may be starting to recycle a little bit here or possibly gain some strength on the western side there's all the convection bands exploding with thunderstorms um, which is very uh, <laughs> very normal with a hurricane in this type of environment but uh, that thing is getting very very close okay now let's go back here to the path this here is wednesday 8 a.m uh tomorrow my time here along the west coast uh we're gonna go towards the late afternoon time frame and take a look and see what it's what it has here uh it's got this thing centered right over the north port area 
Sarasota, Tampa again. Um, these models are showing um, a favorable a favorable position of landfall to the south of the Tampa region. Uh, you can see Northport there getting getting heavily hit. Let's check out around midnight. Things start to die down a little bit there from the uh, from the maximum sustained winds, and then that kind of goes off here. Uh, but it does continue to continue to center itself. Looks like uh, Orlando, Palm Coast area, Jacksonville, all going to get in on this as well. Um, and this thing could linger around for a little bit. Now that is just one weather model. Uh, let's go back here to Tuesday, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, about 6 p.m. time frame on the GFS model. Let's see what this one's uh, showing now. This one's still showing uh, a pretty good southerly track here. Pretty much in the greens with the other one. Wednesday, 7 a.m. There's about category four strength. Although this one, GFS now, uh, looks like that is more in favor of, uh, yeah, it's still showing the Northport area. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's go to about 7 p.m. here. Tampa sits up here. Sarasota, here's the area of circulation, the Hurricane Eye. Northport again, uh, you know, and just because the eye doesn't go directly over the Tampa area does not mean that, uh, you know, that the winds are going to be lighter by any means. Uh, that is still within that those outer bands of some of the strongest winds around this center of circulation. And uh, there's the, uh, you can kind of see the center there as well. Let's see what it got. Let's see what it has for, uh, for lingering around on the uh, GFS model. About the same thing. Lingers on through Thursday <coughs> before it spins off to the north so either way some uh, very um, serious situations here for the uh, Florida area uh, wind is going to be one thing rain accumulation is going to be another let me tell you there's going to be a lot of rainfall this is the next three days of rainfall out there and we're talking about let me click on one of these things here 19 inches of rainfall around the uh, looks like the Lakeland area down here along the coastline uh, let's zoom in here a little bit and see what we got around North Port. Looks like 10 inches, 6 inches in some area. Uh, up here towards the uh, St. Petersburg area, 10 inches. Tampa itself uh, should be about 13 inches or so. And this is all um, subject to change. Some could see more than others. Uh, one more thing I want to do here. I want to check out the GFS model now that we're a little bit closer here going to go here to uh, Tuesday 9 p.m. H or the uh, HRR model which is the high resolution uh, imagery this one's pretty uh, pretty accurate when it comes to forecasting thunderstorms and whatnot and hurricanes as well so uh, 5 a.m. Wednesday category 4 up there kicking up look at that and this is still looks like it's on track to uh, come right into the Northport area let's go back just a couple hours here 2 p.m. Looks like right there, center of circulation right over the Northport area. Again, Tampa up to the north. But notice the strong wind patterns up here and a lot of wind, a lot of rain, a lot of storm surge up here along the coastline as well. Already some evacuations uh, being issued out there. They have been for the past couple days. So Northport seems to be the target on all three of these weather models so just a heads up folks that's some serious uh serious stuff out there and uh we'll definitely keep the folks in our thoughts hope for the best hopefully everyone got out of there and they're away from the coastline again inland's going to be windy and wet as well just got to be prepared out there folks uh let's go ahead and check out the um look at that model again that's absolutely stunning and notice the um let's back out of here and show you guys the pattern here look at this jet getting caught up here in the jet stream is kind of moving up towards the northeast um without that without that pull this thing could have gone further north over here around alabama uh, possibly louisiana but this it got caught up and it's taken this uh this upper level patterns taking the whole thing with it now looking at let me see here 
looking at these models here, uh, it's still there's still that cone of uncertainty here listed on all of these weather forecast models. And that could mean that the uh, center of circulation could be a little bit further west here, which would still put Tampa in the, uh, the bullseye. But weather models are not agreeing upon that. Um, they're favoring a uh, southward, more uh, southerly impact here, as far as landfall goes. Uh, but there's also the uncertainty over here to the east. See, much further east. So this thing could possibly uh, go south of the Northport area, maybe Cape, uh, the Cape Coral, uh, Coral area. Uh, Bonita Springs, is that right? Marco Island. That could put these areas in more of a hazard zone, but... Uh, that's what this cone of uncertainty is for just a little bit of error um, in the forecasting there lee away so to speak um, so we'll watch that and of course we'll come back and uh, report on that as conditions develop uh, back to the earthquake activity kind of wanted to jump over here to this major earthquake swarm out here in the atlantic ocean that's uh, something like i've never seen before uh, seven days all magnitudes here and most of this is just today and yesterday uh, about 45 earthquakes around the Charlie Gibbs fracture zone just just north of there um, By a few miles. There's a couple different frac uh, fracture zones out here uh, Divergent boundaries basically where the separation of the seafloor is occurring and allowing new uh, magma to form a new oceanic crust out there uh, There is a little bit of info on it, and I'm not going to go into details on it tonight uh, but there's a there's a little bit of information on it. It's the largest geological fault in the northern mid-Atlantic Ridge between Iceland and the Azores. Its spectacular topography has been formed by the geological forces that pull the American and the African continental plates apart and allow fresh magma to rise. And there's a whole lot of activity occurring out there right now. Um, Surprised the USGS hasn't jumped in on this as far as uh, maybe a little statement as to what's going on out here. I may ask them about it. Might give them a little little email, drop them an email and see what's up. But uh, either way, this is a lot of activity. Again, 45 earthquakes uh, in the last couple days confined to one area. Uh, looks like it's about uh, 20 by 20, 20 by 30 miles. But most of it along that fracture zone here. All right, let's see what else we got. What has occurred since then, or um, with all this activity? Let's check out Hawaii, because that area had a 4.5 today. Um, I believe the EMSC kept it as a 4.7, but uh, looks like a 4.5 from the USGS. It is in that swarming area around the Pahala area. That's very typical. We always see that, uh, that uh, swarming kicking up down there. It's been consistent. Sometimes it'll go quiet, and then it'll pop up with these larger quakes. Uh, most of the time, it's only twos and threes, but today a 4.5. No major unrest at the Mauna Loa uh, area. All things uh, basically continue there at the Kilauea volcano, as far as the eruptive stage goes. West Coast activity uh, lighting up again up around the Cascades and down through the West Coast. Look at this. Things definitely picking up in the Southern California area. Um, a pretty good swarm of movement across this fault uh, system right here. There's a couple different ones, a White Wolf Fault, and it comes over here to the uh, Southern Sierra Nevada Fault Zone. Basically a parallel fault zone here. I'm not for sure if all these dive down below the surface and meet one another, similar uh, to what we see here at the Garlock Fault, but uh, it's very active today. Been that way over the past couple days. So a lot of movement, a lot of pressure up against uh, this, this fault system, these two fault systems here. Keep an eye on it for, for sure, folks. Uh, the rest of Southern Cal, nothing going on on the San Andreas Fault now. And uh, for the most part, pretty quiet around the rest of the world, folks. Divergent boundaries, separation of the seafloor out there. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. But I got to jump off here. Got a pretty busy night. We will catch you guys a little bit later. If something major changes here, we'll jump in and provide an update. For now, we'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Have a good night. Peace out.